Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at heating and cooling circuit of SCR. So let's get started. So in order to understand why is heating and cooling circuit required for an SCR, we need to first understand what are the power losses that are there in a thyristor. So the first and foremost, the maximum amount of occurring losses is forward conduction loss. And this is because of the conduction state of the thyristor. We also have loss due to leakage current during forward blocking mode and reverse blocking mode, isn't it? We have seen that in the SCR characteristics. Switching losses at turn on and turn off time will also be there. At last, we also have something called as gate triggering loss. Now you need to understand one thing. The forward conduction loss is the loss that is having maximum value during the process of operation. So this is occurring and it has a maximum value between 0 to 400 frequency of the ranges and popularly when they are used in industrial applications, forward conduction losses are maximum. So this loss is very, very important that needs to be taken into consideration and switching losses. When you're talking about frequencies which are much more greater than one kilohertz, obviously the switching losses will also go high. So we have two important losses that we need to take into consideration. That is forward conduction loss and switching loss for higher frequency ranges. So what I'm trying to say here is as the power loss increases during the operation of the thyristor, this losses will result in increase in temperature raise of the device. So when the temperature is actually increasing, the heat associated with the device will increase, isn't it? And if this heat is not given to the surrounding environment, or if it is not transferred to the surrounding environment, then there are chances that the SCR might get damaged. So in order to prevent this from happening, we need to have a heating and cooling circuit of SCR. I hope you now know why is a heating and cooling circuit of SCR required, isn't it? Now we need to understand some similarities between thermal system and electrical system. So we are talking about heating and cooling circuits, isn't it? So that is associated with thermal system and we will be comparing it with an electrical system so that there will not be much amount of difference with respect to electrical and thermal system and you will be able to understand this concept in a much better way. So in electrical system, usually what happens is charge is transferred, isn't it? When the supply is turned on, charge is transferred from one point to another within the circuit. But in case of thermal system, what happens is heat or thermal energy is transferred. Over there charge is transferred, over here heat or thermal energy is transferred. So that is the primary difference between an electrical system and a thermal system. Over here, rate of charge transfer is called as current, isn't it? So rate of charge transfer is called as current. So please make a note of these parallelly because this is very, very important for you to understand. And this will give you a complete picture when we arrive at the circuit diagram of heating and cooling circuit of SCR. Over here, the rate of heat transfer, basically in terms of heat, we are talking over here. So rate of heat transfer is basically called as thermal power. Over there, we call it as current. Over here, we call it as thermal power. I hope this point is clear. Over here, we will be calling potential difference, that is voltage, isn't it? With respect to electrical system, but over here in thermal system, we will be calling this as temperature difference. So it is, so over here we call it as temperature difference. And the fourth important part is the electrical resistance R is given as the potential difference V by I, isn't it? Over here, we call something called as thermal resistance that is in terms of heat. So theta is the designation for it we call it as the difference between temperature that is temperature difference whole divided by thermal power. 
so the reason why we went on with this comparison is because to arrive at this general expression theta is equal to temperature difference by thermal power if i directly write this expression you will definitely not understand it so in order to make sure you will understand it in a much better way this particular formula is derived comparing electrical system and thermal system so current was associated with thermal power potential difference with respect to temperature difference and you have resistance with electrical resistance with respect to thermal resistance so theta v was instead of v we could write temperature difference and that is why in the numerator we have temperature difference instead of i we can write it as thermal power so we have theta is equal to temperature difference by thermal power very very important formula so this unit is given as degree celsius per watt or you can also call this in terms of degree celsius per joule per second basically the units of the numerator and denominator you will be getting this now why is this actually important i'll tell you now we will be taking a look at heating and cooling circuit of ser how does it look like it looks like this so pav is basically the thermal power over here so be very careful with respect to this point we have thermal power we have theta jce theta cs theta sa which i will be explaining so theta is basically the thermal resistance isn't it instead of resistor we have added thermal resistance over here so over here let me call it as junction j i will be calling this as junction c i will be calling this as junction s and i will be calling this as junction a now why do we have this sort of an arrangement is because whenever the heat is very high whenever the heat is very high what will happen this heat will be transferred from the junction so junction is the point where the heat increases of the acr isn't it this will be transferred to the surrounding that is casing and then from casing it will go to heat sink so heat sink is where the acr will be mounted and from there from heat sink it will go to the ambient air or fluid conditions that are subjected to that particular acr so there are various methods when we say ambient it can also be air it can also be liquid so basically what is happening this heat is transferred to the surrounding environment from the junction to the casing to the heat sink and to the ambient and that is why we have j c s a i hope this point is clear and with respect to j and c we call it as theta jc with respect to cs we call it as theta cs and with respect to sa we call it as theta sa i hope this point is also clear so previously we had seen a formula that is theta is equal to temperature difference isn't it divided by thermal power isn't it so thermal power if we call it as pav now we need to arrive at some of the important relationship with respect to this particular circuit so that it will help us to solve the problems so pav can we write pav power as tj temperature difference with respect to this point is tj minus tc whole divided by theta jc isn't it basically i am taking theta over here and pav here temperature difference at this point is tj minus tc by theta jc we can also write the power pav in terms of cs tc minus ts whole divided by theta cs we can also write this in terms of ts minus ta whole divided by theta sa now you might ask me a question as why are we writing equal to here why is it not summation because we have three thermal resistances isn't it that is not the case basically we are transferring the same heat that is produced to the, from the junction to the casing the same heat that is there from heat casing to heat sink and the same heat that was there from heat sink to ambient so that is why we are equating all of them and not adding this is not the cumulative heat it is basically the process that is involved in transferring the heat and that is why we write pav as equal to this particular equation now as a whole can we write pav is equal to tj minus ta that is between these two points if we consider can we write tj minus ta whole divided by we can write theta that is the sum of theta jc plus theta cs plus theta sa in the denominator so basically you will be getting tj minus ta whole divided by theta t the total resistance thermal resistance that is offered so basically these are very very important formula 
i would recommend you to make a note of this so that whenever we are solving the problems it will be easy for you to understand and correlate with whatever we have seen in the theory part now having said that we have one more important point that we have to take into consideration in general heat sinks are made with copper but economically aluminium is more preferable because it is very cheaper isn't it so depending upon the scenario of where this scr is used you will be deciding whether you have to use copper or aluminium heat sinks are used up to a certain temperature range but to protect scr from very high temperature rises forced cooling methods are used so in certain cases scr if it is operating at extremely high temperature then you need to definitely have additional cooling methods like air cooling method basically you can mount fans and you will be able to ensure that the cooling is ensured within the circuit water cooling method or oil cooling method so either of any one of them can be used along with the heat sink so heat sink will definitely be used but that alone will not protect scr so basically we were using the heat sink in order to protect the scr from heat but in addition to that these methods any one of them will be preferred or even two can be used at the same time depending upon the scenario in which the scr is used so i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of heating and cooling circuits of scr in case you have any questions with respect to this video feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching please to keep supporting thank you